This episode of the Beauté Industry Podcast was brought to you by Private Label Skincare. Handcrafted natural skincare products for busy beauty entrepreneurs. Hello and welcome to the Beauté Industry Podcast, your online support community for the professional beauty industry. I am your host, founding director of Beauté Industry, Tamara Reid. Here, we are closing the competitive gap and speaking your language. This is a platform created and dedicated to the professional beauty industry, valuing community over competition. We serve to help connect you with inspiration from industry experts, expand your knowledge through educational pieces, and bring you the latest in product and technology innovation. This is Beauté Industry. Happy Easter community. I hope you're spending the day and have spent the long weekend resting, practicing self-care, and of course, eating loads of chalky eggies. I asked a little while back in our Beauté Industry Facebook community what you guys wanted to hear on the podcast by way of lessons that will amplify your business practice. And so many of you mentioned that PR was something that you had always been interested to learn. Funnily enough, shortly after that, I ended up on a photo shoot with not just anyone in PR, but the founder of Brisbane's leading PR agency. And of course, I snapped her up to record an episode for you all. My guest today is Wendy Serrano of Milk PR, a boutique creative house with a knack for all things social media, PR, digital and events. So you're in the right hands today. After doing some serious hustling and cutting her teeth for various fashion brands, Wendy Serrano quit her everyday nine to five to take on her inner girl boss with the launch of Milk. Wendy is a strategic communicator, publicist, and extraordinary creative recognized for her experience, passion, reputation, and authenticity. With more than six years experience in the industry, specializing in social media, digital marketing, events, and publicity, Wendy has worked with some of the country's most recognized brands in the fashion, food, and lifestyle space, including GHD, Sabo Skirt, Dish Boutiques, and Scotch and Soda, just to name a few. I couldn't think of a better time to bring this episode to your ears, considering now is the perfect time to be working on your business while you cannot work in it, and two is going to give you the tools and advice you need to create a kick-ass PR campaign to gain traction and exposure for your beauty business once the light of the end of the tunnel is clear to be seen. Here's Wendy and I for Beauty Industry. Wendy Serrano, welcome. Welcome to the Beauty Industry Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I am low-key nervous because this <laughs> is probably one of my first ever podcasts. Yeah. Um, so thank you for taking the time out to chat. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. And today we're recording from the beautiful Freedom Suites down here in Brisbane. So Stunning. Yeah, I'm so excited that I could have you in person, which is even better than recording remotely. Yeah, it's so good. It's so beautiful. If only you guys could see it. It's it's stunning. It's amazing. So Wendy, we start our podcast the same way each week by finding out how our guests entered into the beauty industry and so you're not specifically in the beauty industry but we've got you on here today talking everything PR because it's such a massive topic of conversation that I know many beauty businesses are like how do I do it what is PR Mm. I don't even know where to start and so Mm. I want to know for you what your career was like and how you became the person you are today talking on the podcast oh thank you um okay so my story probably began like seven eight years ago now far out Eight years ago now, um, so I started my career working at Lorna Jane, which I'm sure a lot of um, of your listeners are familiar with, so um, working in their social media team, so running all of their social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, even Lorna's Instagram at one point. Wow. Um, So that was a very long time ago when brands were sort of starting to build their social media presence and they realised we actually need, you know people to actually do this it's a huge driving force it's a huge money maker for us so I was there for about two and a half years grew all of the platforms grew all of the channels so I did study PR and journalism at uni you know on paper that's kind of what I've done but I fell into social media and digital um, which I think 
is kind of a blessing. I've got the best of both worlds, which I think I'll talk about a little bit later, you know, how they kind of complement each other and how mm. important that is now in the PR world. Um, so I started off in social media and then after Lorna Jane, I was there for about two and a half years. I went to Dish Boutiques, which is another yes. um, female women's brand. They're actually sister brand to City Beach. So there's mm. about 12 stores in Queensland. They're huge online, um, fast fashion, e-commerce. I learned a little bit more about digital marketing, did a few more photo shoots, um, a little bit more branding, that kind of thing there. Um, again, it must be like a two year thing because after that I kind of wanted to move on again. And then Mm. I moved, um, I wanted to go to the other side. And so I tried PR and I went to, you know, to more traditional PR agencies. So I had about eight to 10 clients. I think the most I had at one time was 13. And now looking back, I'm like, Whoa, I don't know how that's even possible, but a series of, you know, fashion travel, um, there was a bit of beauty in there as well. Um, so we worked with clients like Top Deck, Westfield, um, Black Milk, which was, you know, huge back in the day. So we worked with those kind of clients. I was there for about eight months. That was probably the shortest stint. And then I just kind of had this moment where I was like, I want to do this by myself. There has to be a better way of doing this. I don't know. I just had this niggly gut feeling and I went away, I came back and I just quit, bit the bullet, <laughs> opened up my laptop one day and just kind of started. So that was in 2017. So Milk's been around for about three years now. Um, we, celebrate our, we celebrated our third birthday in January oh, this month, which is happy exciting. Birthday. Thank you. <laughs> it's gone really quickly. Um, and we work with clients across the board so we work with um fit as fk they're an online um, fitness program sabo skirt obviously they're a huge online fashion mm-hmm. business um you know we've worked with scotch and soda wallace bishop so we've had national clients um on our books and we still do and obviously being based in brisbane locally lots of venues hospitality um lots of property developers as well so we're trying to really break into that space a bit of beauty um working with influencers as well so it's really kind of grown into this little creative house of itself um and yeah i can only see it potentially hopefully grow even more um I love doing it every single day I love meeting new people like yourself Mm. um you know going to events and building relationships so that's me to a T I guess right now yeah congratulations I mean having a business that is only three years old when you think about it it's such a tiny business but I mean like scotch and soda Lorna Jane like all of these businesses are national you know Mm. they're massive brands so Mm. well done thank you Um, thanks and so obviously all of these brands have you on their side for PR and our beauty business owners want to get there you know they want to one day be that elevated business but can you break down for us what is PR because I think you know as you said there's a little bit of social media there's a little bit of marketing but it's not only that like what actually what do you do? What do I do every day? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I asked myself. No, I'm kidding. Um, so I guess PR has definitely evolved and changed from, you know, when I went to uni and I learned about it and it's so different actually being in the thick of it and doing it yourself. Um, there is this, a little bit of a t- taboo that, you know, PR is dead. Don't even bother. Yes. You know, it's traditional print, prints dying. There's no point, but I purely believe PR has evolved and it's so different now. So Mm. it's, you know, almost essentially it has to be part of an integrated strategy. So it's all a one-stop shop. So it's, you know, PR, which is obviously publicity, um, you know, a bit of social media, a bit of marketing, events, activations, they all kind of tie in together. So it's no longer just a traditional press release anymore. It's, you know, okay, how can we be creative? How can we generate some noise? How can we generate some leads? How can we generate more click-throughs rather than just oh you know in three months time your product will be in a magazine do you know what I mean and not actually being able to measure that there are so many other ways that you can actually um, do that through PR but it's just in a different kind of way and I think that's a testament to Milk and you know to us and why we do get to work with such big clients like that because we Mm. do like to be on the front foot and we do like to think a little bit differently rather than 
let's just slap a press release in front of a journalist's face and hope for the best. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It yes. is a lot of relationship building as well, you know, networking. Um, I wish it was just long lunches and champagne <laughs> and all of that, but it's, it's so, um, it's a long-term kind of game, I guess, but you can see some instant rewards through different strategies and mm. through different kind of tactics, I guess. Yeah. So traditionally like, 80s 90s PR was basically Mm. just putting out a press release and saying you know this is Butte industry we're launched we're doing really great things and then hoping that somebody in the media would pick it up find it interesting and then maybe write a story on it but nowadays we're seeing like Uber have like free puppy day and like delivering puppies out and so it's completely different to what it used to be and it is about being innovative and getting getting the consumer to understand your brand and capturing that in a really creative way, right? A hundred percent. I mean, the press release isn't dead. Like it's still just as important. I think um, you should have that, have all of your information in one stop shop, but it's thinking outside the box. It's um, being a little bit different, you know, say potentially as a, as a beauty owner, you know, you might have a salon or, you know, you're offering a service. You need to get these people to come in and actually experience your service. Otherwise, they're not going to write about it. Yes. I say that to all of my hospitality, you know, travel um, experience-based clients. You need to invite them in, give them the full shebang and mm. let them do the talking. So at the end of the day, you want to win them over, who then will win the audience over. Yeah, okay. And so question for you, should every business owner have a strategy for PR? Um, and then where do they even start if they yeah. want to do that? <laughs> Um, okay, so my biggest tip would be maybe, you know, sort of sort everything out in-house first. Cross your T's, dot your I's, get everything sorted. We've launched Good venues start. that, you know, have been open for six months and it's all of a sudden, hey, this new venue's here, but really they've been operating for six months. You know, um, make sure that everything runs smoothly, sort everything out, you know, out internally before going out externally. So start from the inside out. Um, you know, making sure your social media presence is active, it's up and running, it's looking really mm. good because the first thing someone's going to do when they see, you know, your name pop up in an article or, you know, link and click through is your social media. And if, you know, it's not really up to scratch, yeah. it doesn't really align, um, you know, making sure you've got imagery as well, um, because, you know, that's the first thing a journalist is going to want to ask. Do you have any images or, right. you know, so they can publish that in their publication um, so just sorting everything out internally first, yes. getting your messages, you know, your key messages down pat, getting your branding down pat. How do you want to position yourself in the market before we go out and pitch it ourselves? You yes. know, we kind of need to experience it, you know, in a way ourselves as well. And we only work with clients that we're really passionate about because if we can't pitch it, then no one's really going to no pick point. it up. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's definitely important, but it's part of a... Um, bigger picture sort of you know strategy I guess it all kind of needs to tie into in together and and work together and complement each other so that yeah when someone clicks through that article they can see your website they can see your social media they can see you know your google reviews they can see your facebook and everything's in line yeah otherwise you guys are going out as the PR company and saying hey this company is amazing and you should go there and have a treatment or you should go there and buy the product and then the client clicks through the Instagram and sees a post from 2018 and it's like hang on what's going on or then they get into the space and they're like well actually this wasn't what their website looked like and now I'm feeling let down so it really is the beauty business owner has to start with their values, their mission, their vision, getting the branding, getting their systems and their therapist to be cohesive and consistent 100%. before coming to you guys. A hundred percent. And I think it's also finding, um, you know, I said this before, like that point of difference, if, you know, say for example, the beauty, um, you know, salon owner, you know, had some sort of quirky backstory or, you know, was in a previous industry before and all of a sudden is, you know, killing it in this game or, you know, it's just finding those angles and potentially putting yourself out there and putting yourself forward and not being shy of that. Journalists and the media love it when there's a face and when there's someone that correlates with that brand. So I think if you're open to that, you know, there's a way to do it. It doesn't have to be wanky. It doesn't have to be showy. (laughs) You know, it can be done in a very tasteful, professional way but yes. you know if 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 you're willing to do that then definitely I would 
truly, truly recommend that also. Ah, so almost having your brand as the face or your story behind the business 100%. brand. Yeah. yeah. And then that kind of ties back into your personal branding and your personal profiling also what does your social media look like what does your instagram look like what does your linkedin look like um you know how do you position yourself in the market because they're going to look at everything wow okay and we always know that um products don't sell products people sell products right so if there's a backstory or emotional link that somebody can go actually i was there or i can resonate with that then that's going to make it easier right exactly yeah interesting And so what types of media should a typical beauty business owner or just business brand trying to, what should they try to get exposure across? Like, how do they even do that? I mean, we see magazines, we see Mm. people on podcasts, we see, you know, experts on a current affair talking Mm. about skin. Not that you really want to be on a current (laughs) affair. Let's choose a better program. (laughs) No, I know what you mean. But how do you become that expert, you know, in in a space? Yeah, I think... We are so lucky now that we, you know, live in this digital age that everything is literally in our pocket or on our screens and everyone's got access to that. I mean, we're sitting in a room now podcasting together and you've been able to set this up, you know, all on your own. You've got the ability to do that and put that out there. So, Mm -hmm. you know, as a beauty owner or, you know, a beauty expert showing off that content, do tutorials, do Instagram, you know, IGTVs. Um, write your own blogs or I I would probably go more down the video road um, yes. you know video at the moment is you know everything back in the day was blogging you know and mm. then it was Instagram so lots of images and now it's everyone's a content creator you know YouTube is is huge obviously and TikTok like you know I'm still trying to figure out <laughs> There's how so many platforms <laughs> so many platforms but I think it's not putting all of your eggs in one basket a lot of people yes. get carried away with just Instagram Um, you know it's positioning yourself on different channels and talking to those different audiences so Mm. I think you know if you want to be you know seen as an expert which you know you are put your content out there Um, you know we've got the ability to reach the masses to reach audiences that we never have before you know back in the day you used to have to pay for an ad in the newspaper or pay for an ad you know on tv now Mm. it's literally in your pocket and there are so many apps and there are so many platforms that you can use to you know help amplify that and and create that so Mm. um you know i think putting yourself out there and that goes back to your personal profiling and you know trying to find your key message and and, and, and treat it as your business. It's your brand. It's your name. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you'll see opportunities, you know, start to kind of come through and, and flourish. I've got a friend. Um, she's actually a stylist. And she started off um, just styling at Westfield. And now she's doing, you know, video um, tutorial, you know, content on yeah, her Instagram. Right. She's uploading them as IGTV. And she was telling me the other day that all these other brands and all these other centers have reached out to her. And, you know, she's doing lots of MC work and, you know, hosting events and she's treating, and it, this is all on her personal Instagram. She's mm. treating it as a, a business. business to her yeah. rather than she's got two kids and a husband and everything. She's like, yeah, I'm slowly, you know, kind of removing myself, moving away from that and doing more. This is my business. This is my mm. name. This is my brand out there. Yeah. And I guess from the beauty industry, sometimes we get a bit pissy at influencers because, you know, they're talking, yeah, (laughs) yeah. I mean, they're talking about skincare and ingredients. And if I hear hyaluronic acid on Instagram one more time, I'm going to go insane. Right. Yeah. But it's only our fault as therapists that influencers who don't have a beauty background are talking about that because we're not Mm. right. And Mm. so that's what you're saying. Like those influencers, they're doing a great job at being influential. They're doing a great job at marketing themselves because they are creating all of the photos that we see and the flat layers and the video content. Mm. Like if we as therapists and beauty business owners started doing that, well then we would be more influential in this space. A hundred percent. It's letting the consumer and letting your audience into your world. It sounds so easy and it sounds so simple, but it's just it's just showing them. It's very, I don't know if you've read the book 1984 and I'm just going a bit off on t- t- 1984, but it's very, no. um, you know, everyone's, you know, got their phones and everyone's letting each other into their lives. And that's just the way that it is. And I think there's a tasteful and there's a nice way to do it, mm. you know, rather than 
the other side of, you know, Instagram. Yes. So. And I guess like we've got all of this content, you know, we literally talk about skin and cellular turnover and ingredients and treatments all day, every day. Mm. If we just spent like an hour or two hours, maybe even writing down like the top 10 questions that our clients ask, because I'm sure every therapist gets asked the same yep. questions all the time. And then creating content out of that, doing videos, bits and pieces, yep. like that would help elevate their brand, right? Exactly. Even, um, you know, a big thing with PR is relevancy. So, you know, right now it's summer, it's really hot, your, your skin's obviously we're probably about to change, you know, going into autumn. Mm. Okay, how, what, what should I be looking at, you know, um, putting on my skin going into the cooler season? It doesn't right. feel like that right now, but, you know, starting to think <laughs> about Brisbane. that. <laughs> Not right now. Um, you know, Valentine's Day. Okay, how can I get my skin prepped um, for right. Valentine's Day? So just being relevant and catching on to those things that everyone's kind of talking about. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel because the same things happen every single year. Yeah, you, Do you yeah. know what I mean? In, yeah. in context. Um, but just, you know, changing it and adjusting it to your audience and, and just, you know, or if there's something that's super tr on, on trend at the moment, like I know brow laminating is such a big thing, yes. um, at the moment. So, um, you know, showing off that service or how it's actually done or what it actually does or, mm. you know, um, before and after results, um, you know, what's another example, like different types of, um, you know, there's so many different facials. I don't even know. I've yeah. never had a facial in my life. So I don't even know like, <gasps> Nobody. Where, I know, I know, but I don't even know where to begin. Like, what would I, yeah, you know, need to right. do? So yes. I don't know if there was someone that could just explain that. Facial for beginners. That. Yeah, literally. Yes. You know, so Amazing. that, you know, being relevant and trying to put yourself in your consumers shoes because like you said you know what they're asking mm. every single day and mm. you know what they would be interested in and then I guess just making it searchable so for you Correct. if you're trying to find okay maybe I do want to invest and have a facial like what are you then going to type into google and then making if you're going to do a blog or a video or whatever yep. that looks like making that the head title you know Prison so facials or yes. you know um oily skin I don't know whatever it is just yeah, yeah keeping that in the back Okay. of your mind Good idea. and I know that's more social media focused but it's still you know a side of PR because then you can repurpose that content and you can push that out there or you can you know someone can look at that and yes. potentially collaborate with you oh hey I saw you did this video can you create it for me in this way or mm. do you know what I mean mm. so yeah absolutely and then get a little feature in Sunday body and soul yeah or exactly yeah. exactly yeah. right yeah. okay after the break, Wendy shares with us her secrets to getting your products in the hands of the right people, the magic to unboxing, and also some house rules around what you can ask of influencers that you're working with. But first, a word from today's beauty partner. Friend and feature of the podcast, Karina Khan of Private Label Skincare is currently helping aspiring beauty entrepreneurs start their own professional, natural, and vegan skincare range for only $500. Yes, that's right. For this small investment, you'll get everything you need for your very own skincare brand to get off the ground with products that are ready to sell in just two weeks. Included in this incredible deal are 30 retail size products that have been formulated and tested by Karina, the founder and qualified cosmetic chemist behind Private Label Skincare, two online courses that have been written specifically to support skincare business owners, label templates and printing, a training manual and free postage and handling within Australia. There's never been a better time to make use of your downtime, get creative and start building the business and brand that you have always dreamed of. This offer will only run until Tuesday 29th of April 2020. So if you're looking for an affordable, quick and easy way to start your own skincare range, then you best not miss out. Visit www.privatelabelskincare.com.au for more information. And now back to Wendy. And so um, we have a few people who listen who have product ranges. Mm -hmm. What can they do to get their product in the right hands? Like, again, we see influencers, we see, you know, a product in Vogue or Marie Claire or whatever. How do they make that happen? Yeah, so... From a media point of view, um, it's definitely finding a way 
of getting that in front of their desks and getting that in front of their hands. So we do a lot of media kits or press kits, I guess you could say. Yes. And we try to come up with different, you know, cute, quacky ways to um, create some attention, create some noise because there's like a two prong approach to it. You know, you deliver it, you send it to the editor, they Instagram it if it's Insta worthy. So number one, you get a social media mention yes. there. And then number two, they try the product and then, you know, potentially end up writing about it. Um, so for example, for one of our hospitality clients, I'll just use them as an example. Um, they, are they're called yolk. So everything's based around the chicken and the egg. Ah. Um, it's really cute. So the branding's really fun. So we created these big, bright yellow balloons and we filled them with feathers, white and yellow feathers. So it's wow. like chicken feathers and inside was an invite to the event, to the launch. Um, and then we just dropped them all off to all different media and everyone Instagrammed popping the balloon. It had a little sticker on it. It was like, pop me How all these cute. little cute chicken feet. And then it popped the feathers went everywhere. The invite was there. So that was a social media kind of piece. And then, yes. you know, they ended up writing about it. So coming up with some sort of creative way to get it in front of the editors and the media and, you know, doing your research and finding who that person is Mm. you know I probably wouldn't go straight to the editor there's always beauty editors or you know even um you know I'm just trying to think of the 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 example for obviously you got stylist but like what's a beauty like a beauty expert or yeah beauty therapist or would be the the same yeah yeah it's just someone you know in that publication who you know, oh, would, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like someone yes. who's yes, like the editor or yeah, yeah. Um, you know, trying to find that person, and it's mm. so easy to find mm. their details, to find their addresses. Yes. It's borderline send scary. Them something and send them something, <laughs> yeah, or even drop them a message on Instagram, um, and and send them a message and you know create something, and that could be mm. purely just your product mm. or packaged, you know, beautifully or nicely or. Um, you know, you could collaborate with another brand or you might have, you know, another service that you might offer or something just to make it bigger and better. And so because they get like editors and even myself now, so many packages, Mm. right? Like products coming every other day. And I'm so blessed that that happens. Amazing. But if you can get something that really stands out and the thing that always comes to my mind when I think of kind of press releases or packages is... Do you remember when Kim Kardashian launched her, um, I don't know what it was, the fragrance and Mm. it was in like the big candy heart and it was like BFF and my bae or whatever she called it. And they had to hit it with the hammer. Yes. In the smash cake. And I was like, I want one of those, you know, just for that pure excitement of opening it. And then because if it didn't happen, you know, if it it wasn't on Instagram, Instagram, it it never happened. So then you've got to film the unboxing and the opening and it's kind of like, don't just make it another box or, you know, make it something that is an experience and unboxing something worthy to film on Instagram. And, Mm. you know, where, um, we're really good friends with the boys from high smile. So obviously everyone knows high smile, the teeth whitening, um, they launched a new toothpaste. It was like a pink toothpaste, smelled like bubble gum. It was amazing. So before it actually launched Very to the public, cool. they did a huge media drop as well. And it was um, in this box and it had all this fragile tape all over it. I think it was, or it said high smile or something. So it was branding. So it kind of really stood out. And then it was in this clear perspex box. And then the toothpaste was, you know, in its amazing. own perspex box. So it just really kind of stood out and, they reached out far and wide to influencers, um, you know, friends of High Smile, so brands they've collaborated with before, mm. um, and media as well, and everyone was talking about it right before the product itself actually launched, which was, you know, say a week later. So they generated all of this hype and all of this noise on Instagram, and then I noticed, you know, about a month's time later, they used all of that content. They had saved it all and created their own awesome. advertising or their own, you know, Yes. I saw it on stories or something. I can't remember. Um, so just trying to find, you know, that creative kind of way to stand out. Mm. So that's from like a media kind of point of view. From an influencer point of view, I think, um, so if you're a service, definitely go micro. So definitely mm-hmm. reach out to those who, you know, they might only have 10,000, like between 10 to 30 to 50,000 tops yes. influencers because their followers are most engaged with, 
you know, in, in Brisbane or they're Brisbane based or wherever right. it is you might be based. Yep. So um, find somebody local rather than going for someone who has like a million followers, like correct. a Steph Claire Smith or Kim Kardashian. Like if you're in Canberra, have a Canberra influencer. Correct. And it, you know, if it's got nothing to do, to do with, you know, with where you're based, then, you know, you won't see the return on that. So finding someone who is, you know, local, um, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's only going to cost you, you know, surely a, a little bit of product and some mm. of your time but I think the return on that is huge yeah well I wanted to ask you because this is the thing like nobody really talks about what an influencer's rates are or mm. what do you offer them can we give them a free treatment and then do they post do we need a contract like are we giving them product and paying them like yeah. where do we even start when we're finding like how do you even find the right person yeah. you know well, we're very lucky that we've been able to work with influencers over a period of time that we can kind of, um, you know, push a little bit more. You, know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours kind of thing. Um, but, you know, as a, say, a potential yeah, salon owner, I think it's number one, going locally. Um, number two, making sure you don't have to have a contract or an agreement, just set some sort of guidelines, Sure. you know, some sort of have it in an email or something you can yes. have an agreement if you like but as you know from experience mm. you know eight out of ten they'll probably end up doing their own thing anyway yes I think with influencers it's not setting too many boundaries it's letting them be creative in their own right letting them show sure. it off in their own way rather than hey I want you to do this 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 so the less you ask the more you'll kind of receive yeah obviously you don't want them to take the piss and you don't want them to you know then that's it. You know, you, you probably won't ever work with them, which is fine. It's a bit of trial and error. Every, yeah. Everyone kind of goes through that. So give them that. guidelines, but like loose guidelines. Yeah, yeah. in yeah. a way. I know it sounds very vague, but it's just... No, it's, it makes so much sense. It's, it's kind of just... it's If you just put a lot of pressure on them, then they'll probably turn around and ask, okay, well, I charge this much or, mm. you know, and then they won't do it anyway. Yeah. Um, I think do your research, you know, making sure they're not working with, I'm a, I'm very big on loyalty and making sure they're not working with, you know, another competitor or someone that might, yeah. you know, it might be confusing because that's confusing for you and then mm. that's confusing for their followers and their audience. One minute they're here, then they're over, you know, down to the other salon down the road and, and that's yes. just not a good look for them. It's just content. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think it's building that relationship with them as well and I mean if you do want to go after the bigger fish um you know obviously the Steph Claire Smith that she, you know she travels she comes up to bar and she comes up to the Gold Coast if you're yeah. based on the Gold Coast reach out and just say hey I'm based on the Gold Coast if you ever need something up here mm. I know a lot of influencers personally who you know they travel to Sydney you know say from Brisbane to Sydney really? and they want to get their makeup done and so they try and find a makeup of artist course. base there to collaborate with or you know, someone to do their hair or eyebrows or whatever it is. So just keeping an eye on that as well and being open to that too. Yeah, okay. And so I guess some basic house rules that I've learned mm. in, you know, just working with product brands and things like that is like ask the person to keep it on their feed because I didn't even know that this was a thing. And then, you know, you take the photo and then you go, oh, actually it doesn't look that good. Oh, yeah. I'm going to delete it. A month later and then it's like no no we need the product to stay on your feed so that yeah. if people scroll back they can still see it yeah. or you know making sure that um they tag the right person like my girlfriend had a swimwear brand mm. and she invested very heavily it was like six or seven hundred dollars for one photo wow. um on instagram and then this influencer took the photo and tagged the wrong brand oh, no. so i think you know sometimes yeah. if you don't know you don't know yeah. um but just tiny things like that like she didn't make any sales out of that because by the time she changed it it was too late too late it was old. Yeah, yeah yeah that's exactly yeah. right so i think yeah just having a few things in mind like risk management what 100%. could go wrong yeah a hundred percent and you know, taking that extra step further. Um, I know codes aren't really a thing offering, you know, 50% off your next service. I know yes. lashes are very, a lot of lashes, you know, salons, they're very big on that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, seeing if that works or if a potential influencer or someone, you know, who's got a solid network, seeing whether that works or just going that little bit extra, you know, and above and beyond for them and kind of giving something back 
you yeah, know, to them okay. in a way. So if I went into, if I was an influencer and I went into Wendy's Day Spa and then you said, well, put on your Instagram, mention Tamara or Beauty Industry mm. um, and we'll give you 20% off your services yeah. or whatever. So yeah. then I guess that's a good way of measuring it because to... If you don't put anything in there, you kind of feel like, okay, well, I've paid Tamara $500 to come in, have a treatment. She's gotten free product, but nothing came back, you Correct. know, but if you don't put a way to measure it, Correct. well, then you don't know who's Correct. coming in based off that influence. Yep, exactly. And I think also, you know, making the most of that experience with that influencer as well. So whether that's recording um, the content yes. or, you know, taking some photos yourself or boomerangs or whatever it is, um, just so that you've got that on your end as well, in case, you know, they don't ever post or you want to use it later down Good the line. Good idea. Good idea. Now I want to switch up the conversation mm. for a little bit to events and launches that you mentioned before. Um, we have a lot of product companies obviously launching. We have brand new clinics launching, you know, that they are new and that they're there or maybe elevating the space. What do you guys do at Milk and what can our business owners do to have a successful launch? Because sometimes business owners, you know, invest in all these balloons and platters mm. and then nobody shows, you mm. know, how can, how can we do a great launch? Yeah, definitely. Um, look, I think we try to make every single launch an event different there's no cookie cutter approach sure there are elements to it that you know we take from other events and we kind of filter them through to you know say if we're launching your salon yes Let's just use you as an example yes um you know so I think we try and treat it as a completely different you know concept in itself um you know there's nothing worse than seeing it going to an event or being at an event and you know who's put that together or it's the same crowd or it's the same people of and course. you see the same thing over and over again that's just regurgitating and that's just lazy that's there's no other way to describe it sorry that sounds a bit harsh but no. it's just the way it kind of is um I think styling definitely is important so yes balloons and platters and everything but I think it's you know being solid on your guest list so who it is that you want to come is it media is it family and friends is it influencers right um a very big thing that we do is we invite um local brands and local you know businesses that are within oh. that kind of vicinity so um you know say say for the gym which is also you know like a service you know we invite friends of the gym you know a networking space or you know there might be the local brewery down the road or there might be a restaurant you know get them to come in because they're going to be your friends, I guess, yeah, at the end of the day. Okay. And they have customers coming through their door. So if they're talking about you, hey, go and see Tamara from up the road. She can do this. Even better for you. Great. Um, so being friends with, you know, everyone in the neighborhood. And then getting them to put stuff in the goodie bags. Exactly. Mm. So it's all mm. happy family, big collaboration. Yes. Um, you know, if you do do a goodie bag. We try to come up with something a little bit different. Um, goodie bags are awesome, but I think... They are kind of not getting a bit old, but I think it's just all Need packaging the goodie bag. <laughs> yeah, or packaging it up in a different way so that they do take something with them. Um, you know, some sort of bounce back offer, getting them back through the door mm. um, later down the line. Um, and another big thing that we do is just giving away all my secrets, but that's okay. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, social media, obviously, you know, a really kind of good hack, I guess, for you to grow your channel or your platform is you know hey we've got two double passes to our vip launch tag your friend and follow in this you know post yeah, like competitions yeah before like the launch before the launch exactly so post that on social media you generate new followers you generate traffic to your page they're potentially two new customers that you might never have had and now they've walked through the door they've fallen in love with the space and they're going to come back and tell all of their friends so i think it's mm -hmm. giving back um, rather than just, you know, asking, you know, yes. everyone to kind of come in. What can you come do? Come to our launch, come spend, come buy products. Exactly. Yeah, you what know, else can we give What you? can you give, you know, like to, to your potential customer at the end of the day? And I think it's also super important, and we t keep this in mind also, you know, if, if there's like a, you know, someone with a solid network or someone who's of high, you know, high influence or who's sort of a heavy hitter, in you know your neighborhood or your area invite them along they might 
have 300 followers on Instagram and might not even know how to upload a story, but they're going to tell all of their friends who, yes. you know, are potentially running in a similar circle. So it's just finding those people with solid networks. Mm. So I think there's kind of two ways to see it, you know, the ones you can measure through social media and through their followers and see what they post. And then the ones that, you know, they're, they're the ones with the solid network that you kind of want to yeah. tap into at the end of the day and who potentially have more money than, yes. you know, the influencers who collaborate. And Yeah, absolutely. And I guess too, for um, a lot of beauty businesses, they can ask their reps or, you know, their products or whoever their account mm. managers for items, you know, so you said giving back, like, yeah. can we have samples or luxury sizes or minis or trials? Can we get someone in doing like demos of skin needling or something like that? Yeah. Like making it activating, you An know, actual not experience. Just, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that actually getting them to come in, it's nothing worse than just going somewhere and then you're just all standing in a standing. room and just talking to each other and making small chat and eating at the grazing table yeah. <laughs> um you know can you be involved in some way can you have some sort of experience going back to that you need to experience it in order to write about it in order mm. to post about it in order to talk about it it needs to have that insta worthy element to it as well um you know as extra as that might be you know it, donut board yeah donut <laughs> board or just something that's just you know someone's going to want to share with their friends yeah um yeah. and get them to talk about after the event yes and so we're talking about all of these things that create traction and build Mm. presence for our business what should we not do because I'm sure there's a lot of do not do this but we don't know what that is until we get there right yes um it again it is a lot of trial and error and it is a lot of I think the biggest thing is from an influencer point of view I think people get so caught up in someone who has 1.5 1.5 million followers. Okay, cool. I'm going to go straight to them. I'm going to blow all of my money on them. Mm. It's being a little bit more selective. And I know it sounds super exciting that, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Someone like Steph Claire Smith came into us, which is amazing. She's awesome. She's great. But yes, you know, how can you make your money go even further or how can you reach more people by, you know, going, you know, mm. more micro. So I think people get caught up a lot in the numbers in the numbers um I think people also have this huge event they have this huge launch this huge big bang and then it kind of just drops off yes so how do you keep that momentum going so finding ways like I was saying you know whether it is that bounce back offer getting people to come back in or you know just being a little bit more active on social media um if someone uploads a photo of the event making sure you are commenting and liking that photo just to kind of constantly keep the engagement be, going yeah keep yeah. The engagement going doing your follow-up so from a PR media point of view picking up that phone and speaking to that journalist hey you know so great to see you at our event last week ah. um you know would would or, or you you do that you do hard work for them I think from PR yes. it's coming up with the story idea it's coming up with the angle it's coming up with okay I think like I was saying before we're going into autumn you know these are the skin tricks to to, you know, make sure your skin's ready for the cooler season, just doing the hard work for them. And they're like, oh, yeah, I love that idea. Can we get something by yeah. Tamara on this? So rather than, like, if I had Tamara's day spa and I was going to host a party tomorrow, um, I might word you up as a PR person to come in but say to you, okay, well, this is our fifth year in business mm. and we're having our, f- our fifth birthday. We used to be a home salon. We've now got three salons and blah, 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 and actually giving you the story. Exactly. Yeah, right. finding that angle. And I think with mm. that, it's doing the research and you know, seeing what that journalist or that editor has potentially written about before or, you yeah. know, what their interests are. It's so easy now to jump on and see on Instagram what they're doing. It's scary, but it's so easy to do that. It's yes. just taking that extra five minutes to do the research on that person so you can find that connection with them and yeah. and do, yeah, that, either that pre-phone call or that follow-up. I think that's so important and I think it gets lost in yes. so many ways. And then that way I'm not just hoping that you pick up that it's our fifth birthday that you know we used to be a home salon and now we've got a multi-site salon like if I give you the story I'm kind of guiding which way the story and the publicity is going to go exactly that's the power of PR otherwise you might as well just you know 
pay for an ad and then just hope people hope see it. Do you yep. know what I mean? Absolutely. And so I want to ask you then, I love giving little tangible things that each business owner can do straight after they stop listening to us yammer on. Yeah. Um, what are three things that every person should go do to strengthen their brand or their personal business brand to get better PR? Number one, I think content which I've been harping on about (laughs) this entire time, creating your own content and finding what it is that you're good at, that you love talking about, that you love showing off. So putting that content out there and treating each channel differently, Um, doing your research. So researching who that editor is, who that journalist is, Mm. um, you know, even stylists, like they're all, you know, very interested in, um, like my friend was talking about before, talks about beauty all the time so finding those kind of people that have that network so doing your research is really important and I think another third one that's super simple and I see it all the time because we do work in social media quite a bit as well is your bio your Instagram bio so just making that as searchable as possible you know um using keywords um, in your heading and in your bio itself. So Mm. maybe just auditing that a little bit and having a look at that and seeing what you've actually got in there um, just to help your algorithm. That actually makes a lot of sense because I mystery shop around the country. So, for example, just um, the other day I booked my flights to Adelaide for our South Australia brunch and I thought, well, I might as well do a mystery shop when I'm over there. And the first place I went to was Instagram and I typed in like Adelaide Facial, Adelaide Day Spa and hardly any of them came up. So if they went and literally just changed it to like Adelaide Facialist or Browse Adelaide or whatever they would get more traction yeah, immediately. Exactly. Um, even in your hashtags or geotags, I just think Instagram's so underutilized. Um, it's a Google in its yeah. own right. Like I Instagram anything before I jump on the website because, you know, yeah. it's just what we do now. So it's just keeping yes. that. I do that as well. Like if I'm going to go out to brunch, I'm a very visual person. Um, I want to see like what you're having what the, yeah, yeah what the eggs on the avocado looks like yeah. otherwise no <laughs> you're not going to order that yeah exactly um, and you know just think about your consumer I guess everyone's at work or sitting at their desk they're not going to have this big giant you know website opened up on their yes. desktop so how do you make it as you know mobile friendly as possible and Instagram friendly and making sure you've got your contact us or if there's some sort of booking system on there that's super easy that you can just click rather than there's nothing worse when you pick it up and you're like oh I've got to go on my computer to do it because it's not working you're speaking my language I say this all the time I'm like if you have an Instagram make sure that link goes straight to your booking a hundred percent hundred yep. percent. Amazing. Wendy, thank you so much thank for featuring you. today. It's been a pleasure to have you in the space here at Freedom Suites and also, you know, to get all of your insight into PR. I'm going to jump off now and go and do all of the things so we can just get global domination. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me and um, yeah, hopefully I get to chat to you soon. Prior to meeting Wendy, I kind of thought PR was just paying someone to rave about your brand and get influencers for you to work with. But now I realize it's so much more than that. PR is now more clear to me than ever that it's more about the brand story, connecting with those who align with it and sharing your wins, launches, campaigns and events with the world to gain you further traction and brand exposure. As Wendy mentioned, there is so much that you guys can do yourself by way of generating PR, which you guys know I am a huge fan of, so there's been no better time to do so than right now. If you're feeling game over the coming week, why not write yourself a press release for some of the ways your business is pivoting during this time and send it to your local paper, perhaps contact some influential people and ask them to come into your space for a treatment when you reopen again, or even start to plan your reopening launch party. Wendy and I would love to see how and where you guys are listening along this long weekend. So take a little photo or video of yourself and your surrounds while listening to this episode playing in the background and tag at milkpr.aus, myself at Tamara Shaw Reed and at Beauty Industry, and we will reshare your stories. Remember, social media and resharing gets your business in front of more eyes and ears too. So that's a little PR hack from myself. 
As always, your support means the absolute world to me, a little independent podcaster sitting in the mountains of Brizzy in my spare room. So when you guys do subscribe, leave me a rating or a podcast review, that tells me I'm not just sitting here speaking to myself every week on the mic. So I really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys have the most stunning long weekend and a beautiful rest of the week. Until next time, stay connected.